I can remember it was a, it was a beautiful day. And I remember it was Joplin graduation. We had a group of, uh, of church uh, leaders over at the house and uh, we were making tacos, having a great time like we normally do and because we had people over, we had the TVs off and weren't listening to any radio or anything. Helped someone cut their yards, came home, got shower, uh, sat down to rest and all of a sudden heard the siren go off. This is a very dangerous situation. Take shelter now and see that tornado on the ground from our tower camp. It was more than just a tornado was grinding into the earth. firefighter walked in and um, I heard somebody say, I need trucks to pick up bodies. It was just a horrible, a horrible scene. People were stunned. They were looking for their loved ones. I'm Mike Woolston, uh, was the mayor in Joplin uh, at the time of the tornado. Uh, the city manager, uh, the fire chief, and I uh, went on a vehicular tour of the area just to try to get a sense of what had happened. The photographs and the television coverage just doesn't give you any sense of the reality of things when you can stand in a spot and literally turn 360 degrees and everything is just flattened. I've seen a lot of tornadoes and I've never seen anything like Joplin. It was like a bomb went off. The path was about a half to three quarters of a mile wide and uh, roughly 13 miles long. We were triaging people and splinting arms with rulers and duct tape. And I looked up and I saw the Salvation Army. They were just there. People just always know that the Army's gonna be there. If there's a disaster of some kind, the Army's gonna be there and they're gonna do whatever needs to be done to get you through that. When I arrive on a disaster scene, um, the first thing you see is you, you, you see people just trying to find their way. Doesn't matter what the disaster is, whether it's you know a 9-11 or whether it's Hurricane Katrina or the floods in North Dakota, it's always the same. There's people trying to find their way to recover and it's very difficult. And sometimes, just being that shoulder, walking up to someone, being the shoulder to cry on, someone to talk to, and somebody to pray with them, um, that's oftentimes the, the most critical part to someone in their process of recovery. That first day, walking down in the rubble, there's search and rescue crews recovering bodies. I remember walking with Major Richardson and Major Granger, and one family had already recovered two people from the rubble, and they were waiting for the third to be pulled out. And I was struck by how readily they walked right in there with them and held their hands and prayed with them and stood by their side and waited with them for the worst. We go because we want to be there. We go because we want to help people. We want to be the presence that will uh, be a blessing and a hope to them. And so doing the most good to me simply means that I'm promising you that I'm here for you. I'm promising you that I am here to, to see what I can do that will help you. The Salvation Army brought hope the street corner was just overloaded with people of all income levels and, and ages and races, all just in the same moment, they were the same. Um, there were babies without formula that needed diapers. There were people that were injured and needing medical attention. Um, everyone was hungry, everyone was hurting, and here was the Salvation Army in the heart of it. We 
build local based teams uh, and our, those local based teams are, we call them the DERT teams, the Disaster Emergency Response Teams. It's critical for us to have local teams ready to go to respond to the community. And we've gotten pretty big, but the heart of the ministry is the same, is serving the people what they need when they need it. The Army served over 10,000 meals per day. Uh, I know they had a distribution center where people who had lost everything could go and get uh, clothing, could get household items, furniture, uh, shoes, socks, underwear for the kids, and they have case management to handle the emotional needs of the community. It was, it was wonderful that they were there, and they stayed. Out of all the national organizations or government agencies or, you know, the people that, that really go in and help people, the Salvation Army hasn't closed its door, said, okay, we're done, we're gonna go on to the next thing. They've never done that. I mean, it's a year later and they're still helping. We don't create hope. The hope is there. There is a tomorrow.